The effects of the fuel hike is being felt all around Nigeria as citizens adjust to the new reality in the country. Joining us from Abuja to discuss the soaring price of petrol and the effect on citizens is Mervyn Yubana, former African representative, World Assembly of Youth and political analyst. We will also be discussing the first few days of River State Governor Sim Fubara in office. Good morning. Good to have you join us on the morning show today. Thank you for having me. All right. So, yeah, thanks for having me. Okay, you're, you're welcome. Um, this is where we have found ourselves. Everybody seems to be complaining. Uh, on the one hand, there are major complaints. People are like, where are we? Is this what we bargain for? But on the other hand, the government is saying that we need to go through this furnace before uh, things will settle down and people begin to enjoy, enjoy. You represent a major constituency, the youth, you know, who are like the majority. How do you think that Nigerians, particularly the youth, at this time should begin to adjust and um, relate with what the government is feeding them, you know, about how life has suddenly changed and may change more in terms of um, the things that we have always enjoyed, but they are no longer there. Well, uh, thank you very much for having me. The issue of the removal of fuel subsidy is not an uh, easy pill to take, no matter how you try to dress it. But it is a very serious decision that must be taken. Experts, even the World Bank, and those who are in the petroleum sector have said it, that it is not sustainable to keep on this fuel subsidy thing. And it must go, because it's embedded in corruption. Having said that, a proactive government at the local level, at the state level, at the federal level, should also look at how to emulate the, the sufferings of these people. What can be done to ensure that the masses do not go through this alone? And that is why I want to give a typical example of what was done in my own state, for instance. Even immediately the first subsidy was announced, the government of Fubara immediately rolled out buses, intrastate buses, so that the commuters who cannot afford to join the commercial buses could actually use that for workers, for students, and for the, those who take their goods within the local governments. And that is one key area, but that is not enough. You know, the government also went further to say, look, how do we decongest the state? How do we open some other areas and ensure that the state is working? The government took the bull by the horn and went straight in getting the uh, ring route uh, flagged off, getting one of the best companies, Julius Beja, to go ahead to start the ring route that will cut across seven local, five local governments, but in the second phase will cut across additional three local governments. So these are some of the areas in which the state government worked. But in terms of the federal government, I know that they have put one or two things in place including the um, traditional cash transfer that the Buhari administration was doing before, although they have decided not to change the, the list and the, um, uh, the model in which they operated before. But I don't think that transferring 8,000 Naira to people will actually solve the problem. I feel that the government looks, needs to look at alternative means of transportation for farmers, for students, for workers, and for the general public. Government should invest strongly in the rail sector and also the regular transportation we have. This will help, including the, uh, the marine transport. It will help a lot, because if government invests in these areas, it will cushion the effect of it. For instance, somebody does not need to take his car to go to the filling station if you have a, a means of going to work. So definitely that will help, and that is very key. That is in short term. In the long term, government also needs to invest or create the enabling environment coming out with policies that will encourage private sector to invest in the petroleum sector, like refinery, 
you know, refining the petroleum products. There are modular refineries across the Niger Delta that they need to give them crude oil so that they could key in into the mainstream of refining petroleum products for our people. Because if you shut down those modular refineries and you, don't, you starve them of the crude, then they will now start illegally refining these products, uh, which is not good for the economy. Mm -hmm. So I think it is one way that the federal government needs to look into too, that will also ameliorate the sufferings of the people. For instance, if you look at um, the, the Niger Delta region, almost every community in the Niger Delta, you have an artisanal refiner that is one of these uh, boys, we call them boom fire, that do this local refining. You could bring them into models one modular refinery that covers certain communities, another modular refinery that covers certain communities, and they can feed what they produce to the tank farms that are within that locality, which the NMPC Limited could buy off these things from them and at a regulated rate, which will also help to cushion the effect of the fuel well, uh, uh, subsidy remover. Mm. So these are some of the areas I think that the federal government should look into. All right, then. Thank you for setting uh, the tone of this conversation, uh, Mr. Marvin. But following the rise of uh, the pump price of petrol, uh, like uh, we all know, from 537 per liter to now 617, the Nigerian uh, uh, Labour Congress has warned that it may be forced to withdraw from the dialogue uh, with, that it's currently having with the federal government over the cushioning of the hardship brought on Nigerians. In fact, in a statement signed by the President, Joajero, the union has accused the government of callousness and saying that its palliative measures to address the repercussions of the subsidy removal lack transparency. I'd like to know what your thoughts and the, are, are, are on that. And of course, furthermore, on the proposal to pay National Assembly members the sum of $70 billion and the judiciary $36 billion. Uh, in the same statement, he described it as the most insensitive, reckless, and brazen diversion of our collective patrimony into the pockets of public officers who sworn responsibility it is to protect our nation's treasury. What do you make of the two scenarios? The fact that we're having this uh, increase and Nigerians feeling the grunt of it and then our National Assembly members receiving a huge chunk of 70 billion and the judiciary 36 billion respectively. Well, the issue of um, uh, increase in bond price has to do with international uh, petroleum factors, like what the NMPC Limited told us from their mainstream, downstream petroleum regulatory authority. They said it was due to the increase in the, the, the price of crude oil. We understand because the, that sector has been deregulated. Government do no longer control it. So the market forces will definitely control the price. But when you have enough in the market, the price tends to come down. But when we keep importing crude oil to refine it, or we import petroleum, finish, uh, petroleum products directly to Nigeria, the price will, will, the price will, be, will, 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 will definitely go high. But if we produce locally, we will not be having much of that problem because you will have enough. And you know, when the supply is more and the demand is low, the price will definitely go down. And that is what? For the Labour Congress and the unions, I think that we are all in it together. There is no Nigerian that is more Nigerian than the other. The Labour Congress for a long time has been on this same page. During the Good Luck Administration, they came out, a lot of politicians came out, the unions came out to stop the, that administration from, in, from removing this uh, petroleum subsidy. Where they did get us, nothing but corruption and more poverty in the land. So I think that what the labor unions should do is to come out with a working plan in collaboration with the various government agencies. So look, these are our demands. These are the things we want you to put in place. And dialogue must continue. We cannot say we'll keep away dialogue because whatever you do, you still come back to the dialogue table. So I think that is what the labor unions should do. Now, if we have to take it to the subnationals, states should also from the funds they are getting because of the removal of uh, uh, fuel subsidy, they are having more funds. Those funds should be invested back to the people. If you look at the areas like agriculture, for instance, we have a huge sum, 
chunk of uh, uh, investment that we need to do there. And we have food insecurity in Nigeria because of lack of uh, security for the farmers and lack of processing plants for them, lack of storage facilities and all that. I think that states should also invest in these areas so that to cushion the impact of the removal from the masses so that we have more food produced locally so that if you don't need to transport your food all the way from um, um, Benue all the way to Abuja, then you don't need to go and spend much money on uh, transportation. So locally, we should know how, we should find a way around this whole thing. And that is where the states and local governments come in, which well, is very have, critical you and haven't very touched important. On, you haven't touched on the fact that we're seeing a 70 billion naira going to the National Assembly, especially at a time where we need to be able to yeah. push certain monies to certain Nigerians. Do you think that this is the best time to be having such allocations? It doesn't, th that doesn't come off as insensitive to you? Well, it comes as, as very, very sensitive to me and every Nigerian. But you see, since I don't have the details, because when they mention figures and you don't have the breakdown, we don't know what the 17 billion is for. We, I think the budget, the National Assembly needs to be more transparent in their budget analysis and any allocation they are doing now. Nigerians need to know, because if you're asking Nigerians to cut down, Nigerians need to see the leaders also cutting down. So definitely, it should be very clear the analysis should be clear so that let us know where every Kobo and Naira is going to. That is very important because in this time we are now, everybody's in need together. We said let all of us endure and see how we can salvage this situation. So it is very important that the, the masses will know exactly what the leadership is doing, both at the national, uh, at the legislative arm and the executive arm of government both at the local government level, the state level, and the federal level. It is very important because that transparency will be what will now buy the trust of the people. It is very important. I don't know the, the, how the money is being allocated or what the money is meant for. It sounds, uh, 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 sounds very big, but don't forget also that when you go into the details, you might find out that that money is not being allocated to a senator or a House of Reps member. It might be for other services and definitely for other um, um, uh, uh, items that they might need or other projects they might need to uh, embark on. So let us be uh, circumspect when we mention figures to know that, yes, definitely, it is, it, this time is a very um, sensitive time. So when the Nigerians, keep, Nigerians keep hearing that, oh, X amount of money is being spent by this, X amount is, we overheat the polity without coming out with the details. And that's not the fault of Nigerians, that's the fault of whoever came out with that figure without bringing out the details. So it is very important we do that. Even what has happened now with the uh, FAC, the amount they've shared, is it been a very long time that uh, the local governments and the state government got that kind of money. So I, I'm looking at the states that are going to invest this. And that is why I keep making reference to my state. River State is the only state that has come out with such huge projects. A project, a project that cuts across uh, 51 point, uh, or about 51.15 kilometers of dual carriage road with street lights, um, six bridges, and uh, also a bridge across uh, the river. You know? And this is going to open up the, the, the state. It's going to open up um, the, all right. the, all right. the all right, Marvin. hubs all right. in the states and all that. Okay, all right, very quickly, we just have like, you know, less than a minute to, to go. You've been referencing your state, your state, you know, <laughs> all this time. Um, what in specific terms uh, would you say that uh, Sim Fubara, the governor of River State, you know, has done in almost two months that he's been there? I mean, what people say is that this is a man who comes across as somebody who's still tied to the apron, you know, of a former governor Wiki. They say that he spends more time in Abuja than he does in River State. And this is somebody who, you know, came out and, and said that he has no apologies about the fact that his, uh, uh, his son is graduating from a private school and things like that. But here you are saying that he's, you know, he's to be referenced when it comes to good governance and excellence. Tell us in less than one minute what specifically he has done. He hasn't formed the cabinet yep. yet, but what has he done? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, specifically, let me go into the issues. Let me not waste our time. 
Specifically, he has awarded a 51.15 kilometer uh, um, a dual carriage road with six flyovers, one uh, bridge crossing, which is uh, about uh, almost 200 billion. He has paid 70% of that to the company that is doing the road. And they are starting from six flanks. Besides that, he has also gone further to provide, within this short period, interstate, uh, intrastate transport buses that will eliminate the sufferings of the, the, the impact of the first subsidy on the citizens and also those who live and do business in River State. He has also gone round the deplorable areas in Port Harcourt and Obiakwa local government to ensure that those roads that have been causing those areas that we've had uh, black spots in oh. terms of insecurity, those areas have been flushed out and all those bad spots have been fixed. And right now they are doing it. Besides that, the government has also moved beyond that to go to the, the road that was cancelled, the Andoni Road, the legacy road that goes to Andoni. He has reawarded it to a reputable company too. This is within um, about 60 days of his administration. And that's what we are seeing him doing. So uh, for me, a government that has come in place like for a very short time and has been able to achieve all this, I don't see, I cannot name any state government in Nigeria that has been able to achieve this feat within this short period. All right. And then. who has the, the, the political will to carry out this project. Mm -hmm. So I can say that other states should emulate what uh, the River State government is doing. And I think if it follows on this path, definitely River State will be the, 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 the center of investment and the, mm -hmm. the, 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 the heart of uh, tourism in Nigeria. All right, then, very quickly uh, before we go, your governor did say that at least 16 projects estimated to be ready before his first 100 days in office. Yes or no, do you think he'll be able to meet the 16 projects ready to be commissioned? Will that be ready in 100 days? We can hold you to it. Yes or no? Definitely, the projects are ongoing already. All right, yes, then. All right, then. It's Definitely. time now. Thank and you now so much. There's a, there's a partnership <laughs> with the Niger Delta Development Commission partnering mm -hmm. with the state government on some other projects. All right, then. Going to All right, right then. Up. Thank you so much, Mr. Marvin Yobana, of course, uh, a former African representative, World Assembly of Youth and political analyst.